What's up Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's happening with Tesla spy in the overall markets. I'm going to talk about a big shift in yields that happened this morning, it's causing the market to dip a bit, not to mention some new news about Tesla, which you should be watching for in terms of the charts and these levels. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. Deposit $2,000 or more and you're guaranteed 40. The offer ends very soon in just about eight days. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the market. So I just wanted to mention that so far we saw a little bit of a dip on Tesla again. We're retesting this 217 area, but we still remain range bound between 215 and 220. And now we're going to be watching to see if 217 holds. If it doesn't, we're going to be looking at that 215 to support to see how it reacts. And just be very conscious of the fact that we are still attempting to, uh, you know, consolidate in this range. So we're going to give this some time to develop. Just know a couple of things. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. We have Harker giving a speech a little bit after market open. And then at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index. So look and see what happens with this data coming out. Once this data is released, we'll see if this causes a bounce in the markets or a bigger dip. So watch for some high volatility at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 30 minutes after market open. Watch and see what this leads to. Now, I also want to mention that as far as Tesla goes, we did get some negative news, which is part of why it's actually dipping. Elon Musk and Tesla have been sued for using AI-generated Blade Runner 2049 images at the RoboTaxi event. So I, I believe it's not just uh, Elon Musk and Tesla, but also, uh, you know, Warner Bros. who are all involved in all that. It's not the best of news. Uh, I went over this in more detail yesterday, so I just want to say that this is something that's very important. It's making all the headlines right now, and this is a little bit more negative, at least for Tesla moving forward. Now, for the broader markets, I want to call out that there's been a lot of talk about how yields are rising and we're seeing many analysts saying that yields are going to be continuing to run up which once again is not the best for the economy this tends to be another indicator that once again a recession is nearing so just be very mindful of that uh i think that right now there's been some more doubts of the fed being as um as dovish as what the market was initially expecting there's a little bit more of a doubt because of what's happening with yields that's part of <laughs> part of why the market's dipping a little bit so this shift in yields is what's dragging the market a little bit lower we'll have to see how we end up reacting to some key support nonetheless i also want to mention that uh, there are some things to know before the market is open uh we had some earnings that just came out so i'll just briefly talk about those the market was pumping quite a bit and we had some good uh, it was pumping quite a bit yesterday near close, but now it's like slowing down. Just to clarify that for earnings, just know that GM did relatively well. They raised their guidance for 2024. They exceeded their overall estimates with the beat off of EPS and revenue. And overall, good guidance is what's brought bringing the share price up. So GM did relatively well. And besides that, uh, I'm not seeing anything else that's too crazy, at least on the news. So earnings have been quite good so far. That's why the market is once again... Uh, holding up as well as it's been but just know this about tesla and the broader markets we are still dipping with these yields shifting so watch 217 for tesla if it does not hold we're looking for 215 as our next target and we have resistance to watch for the tougher resistance is going to be closer to the, like just under 220 but also aligns with our 20 ema so i see a risk of us dipping a little bit lower to 217 if not 215 and then we'll see if we get some kind of balance or not that's going to be very very critical for the way we end up moving so we're kind of stuck in the middle, but I do think there's a risk of us getting closer to 215 before we attempt to rebound. So give Tesla the time it needs. For others out there, we also have SPY. SPY is looking a little bit weaker, dipping a bit, but it's not the end of the world. We have not lost our critical support just yet. We still have this 580 support right here. If we lose that, I'm looking for 578.95 as our next target. So watch those levels carefully on SPY. One could argue we have a head and shoulders like structure, so it is possible this may play out. But if we turn bullish, you want to see it reclaim 582 as we still have a gap to fill above. So watch and see, do we hold 580, if not 578.95, and then try to rebound to fill the gap? Or do we continue to lose this 578.95 and start dumping even more? I'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case. For now, I'll look for a little bit more down. So it might tip a little bit more to the lower 580s. And we'll see if buyers defend it or not. Don't forget at 10 a.m. we have some more data coming out. So we'll see if this data causes a bounce. So for now, I'll look for a little bit more down. So it's about the 580 area upon open. And when the data comes out, we'll see if we get a big bounce back up to fill this gap or if we end up dipping all the way down to where this uh, you know, EMA happens to be. My gut tells me it might dip closer to the EMA at first, but then I don't know for sure if we're going to lose it. We could test this and then try to bounce. So it might be, there might be a little bit more downside on SPY before it attempts to bounce, guys. So don't be overly bearish. 
We'll have to see about that. NVIDIA has been pumping very nicely. We have this resistance around 144. We came very close to 145, and now we're coming back down. So we'll have to see if we can break and hold above uh, 144.5, almost 145. If not, there is a risk of it coming back down to about 142.5. So it might dip to 142, come back up and continue to consolidate as the most likely case. For ES, we're actually starting to dip a little bit. We have a head and shoulders like structure, left shoulder here, a head up here, then a right shoulder. Uh, we have 58.69 as our resistance. If this breaks, we're looking for 58.80. If this starts dipping, we're going to be looking for an attempt to get all the way down to about the 58. Uh, 50 zone all the way down here on ES. So I just want to call out that we have previous resistance becoming support at 58.40 to 58.50, which is going to be a very, very key zone. If we continue to fall, which I think we might, we might be looking for a test of those levels, but then we'll see if we get a bounce of previous support becoming, uh, previous resistance becoming support on ES. So we might be dipping close to 58.50 around that range, and then we could be looking to see if we get a bounce after that, but that's what I'm seeing at least thus far. For other factors out there, we also have Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been dipping so far. If we can't hold above 67,000, there is a risk of us dipping closer to about the 66,500 area. So be very mindful that Bitcoin may dip a little bit more. Uh, we also have a double top leg structure. Um, if we do get closer to 66,000, we'll see if we get a bounce drop, but that's what I'm seeing at least for the time being. For NQ, we're actually dipping a little bit. Instead of trying to hold above our EMAs, we're starting to lose them. We need to reclaim 20,442 to turn back up. As of right now, it looks like it might dip a little bit close to where the support happens to be. So we're looking at this zone right over here, the 20,300 flat area. Uh, this is where we've seen a lot of previous resistance becoming support. So I think there's a good, <laughs> excuse me, I think there's a good chance we dip a little bit more. It's 20,300. And we'll see if we bounce off that or not on NQ. We look for a little bit more downside. And then we'll see what the reaction is once the static comes out at 10 a.m. For the QQQ, it's the same thing. This looks like it might tip a little bit more. I think we could get very close to about 491.1. We might come down to fill this gap for a little bit of a dip. And then we'll see if we bounce very close to 490 or not. If we do get a bounce close to that 490 to 491 area, we could rebound for 493. If we lose 490, we're looking for a much bigger dump all the way down to like the 487 area. That's going to be where previous resistance uh, becomes support as well. So for now, look for a little bit more downside on the QQQ. Uh, then we'll see what kind of reaction we get with all the data that's coming out. Apple's dipping as well. We're looking at support at 233. If that fails us, we're going to be filling the gap back down to 232 flat. And if this holds, we could attempt to rebound. So I think there's a risk of us dipping lower to fill this gap. Then we'll see what, how, what kind of reaction we get after that. For Netflix, we pushed very, very nicely. But like I said in my video yesterday, to be careful with it, there was that risk of it slowing down after getting so much momentum. So we could be looking for a test of 760 very soon for a bit of a very healthy pullback, right? Very healthy, nothing too crazy. The IWM Russell 2000 is getting a little weaker. Uh, we're looking at this previous resistance becoming support very close to 220. We'll have to see if 220 holds. If it does hold, this could attempt to maybe dip a bit first and then try to bounce back up for this test of 222. If not, if 220 fails us, we're looking more bearish. So I think it might test 220. We'll see if it bounces. Um, for coin, we ended up failing to hold support. So we're looking for a test of 207. If that holds, we bounce. If not, I see a dip all the way down to 202 coming. For Amazon, we're consolidating. We started off with a nice push, but instead of breaking out, we're now retesting 188. Look for a test of 187.25. We'll see if we bounce, but we're just range bound for now on Amazon. Meta was supposed to get a bounce off the falling wedge, but so far we have not been able to do that. We're still technically respecting the falling wedge. So there is still a risk of us dipping lower now that we didn't get the bounce here. We could, we could maintain the wedge and start dipping down to 568 if we don't get back above 575. Let's look for 572, and eventually 570 as our support, and then 568. For um, Microsoft, we're just range bound. We're looking for a test of 419. We'll see if it rejects or not. I think, excuse me, I think we might be pushing up to about 420. Then we'll see what kind of reaction we get. And then for Google, we could be dipping a little bit lower, back down to about 163. Anyways, that is it for my video, at least for my pre-market update for Tesla and others. Tesla remains range bound. It might dip a little bit more closer to 217. And then we'll see what the reaction is once we get our very important man, uh, manufacturing numbers at 10 a.m., so 30 minutes after market open. But for now, just know the market might tip a little bit more. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a great day, and peace out.